said, Dear Brother Jeff, I'm just a big black brother. I've been hanging out with the Panthers. They ain't what they pretend to be. Uh, they got a hit out on you. I know what I'd do if I was you. Sign the black brother. And uh, they sent this to Ford, and it said the purpose of the letter was to seek retaliatory action. Uh, and, and so uh, Ford apparently maybe didn't believe this black brother sounded too black to him, but he didn't take retaliatory action. Uh, and when we, we uh, on the witness stand, we, we questioned the, the head of the FBI who signed up on that action, and we asked him, what's a hit? He said, there was, he said the hit is a nonviolent attack. And we said, well, uh, it didn't sound that way to us. Uh, how did the, 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 guy, the lawyer asked the head of the FBI, how did you know Jeff Ford wouldn't just take a gun and blow Fred's head off? And he said, well, uh, we knew that the COINTELPRO program was nonviolent. And the lawyer said, well, did anybody ever communicate that to Jeff Ford? You know, he had a sixth grade education. Was he told that the program was nonviolent? But anyway, so that gave the, the motive, the, the willingness to use illegal and violent means to take care or to uh, extinguish Fred Hampton was shown in that memo. So we think we had, we had a really strong case. Uh, it went on for 17 months. I got held in contempt. My partner got held in contempt. I spent a night in the MCC. Uh, and at the end, the judge gave the jury a set of instructions. If they followed them, they would have had to find for the police. And the instructions were, if the police, if the Panthers used anti-police rhetoric, or if they had unregistered weapon, then the police action was justified. Well, you can criticize the police and even have an illegal weapon, and that doesn't allow you to uh, get killed in your bed at 5.30 in the morning. So in spite of that instruction, the jury was hung. So unable to get the jury to do his bidding, the judge actually dismissed our case while the jury deliberated declared costs against the Hampton family and the Clark family and set an appeal bond of $100,000. And that was a pretty low day. Um, and we, didn't, we finally, after licking our wounds and feeling bad, we, we got our act together. We wrote a 230-page appeal in which we laid out all this information. The last line of our appeal was, power to the people. <laughs> and we were pretty heady or pretty angry or nothing left to lose, I guess, uh, at that point. And we actually got a reversal, and they said we had presented more than enough evidence to go to the jury on the conspiracy of the, of the FBI and the, and the uh, local police. And they reversed my contempt. And they even said we could use the evidence that the FBI hid files as evidence of guilt in the next trial. We eventually got a settlement of about $1.85 million, which isn't a huge amount in today's day, given that there were four people shot and two people who were killed. But this community was still divided. It would be very hard to get a jury verdict with some white people on it uh, in that case. And when I talked to Iberia Hampton, Fred's mother, she said, I said, well, what do you think? And she said, they got away with murder. And that's true also.